think, yeah, okay, I think we're good. Um, hi, <laughs> um, I'm Miles, I'm the secretary for the DCC, and this is one of two different uh, quarter of prep calls that we are doing tonight. This is Scheduling 101 with Jennifer King and Mark McGee. So if you guys would like to kind of introduce yourselves and then launch into the talk, it'd be great. Great. Um, I'll start. I'm Jennifer. I'm currently a senior at DePaul. I'm in the creative producing concentration. Um, I've worked on a couple student shorts, student web series as a producer. Um, I've also been first AD, second AD a couple times on some shorts and a feature. Um, so that's where a lot of my experience comes from. Um, I was reached out to by the DCC for these quarter preps, and um, I also do a, another org on campus called Delta Kappa Alpha. We're a professional cinema society, and I was like, absolutely, these sound great. Um, we just felt like these workshops um, could be something that people could use as a resource when everyone is uh, in different places right now because of what's going on. Um, so yeah, that's me, Martha. Um, hi, yeah, I'm Martha McGee. Uh, I teach mostly television um, courses at DePaul. I also teach pre-production. And yeah, uh, I mean, my background's been off a lot of production, post-production, but I'm always thrilled to talk about the importance of pre-production um, and just how much time, money, and everything else you can save if you do good pre-production. So I'm happy to be here. Um, Martha is one of my favorite professors and taught me a lot of this. <laughs> so um, to start off, I just put down some pre-production roles that you might see. Some of these, I know for me, when I kind of learn them in class, um, they can get confusing and kind of model. Um, but you have the producer who is going to be overseeing the entire production from beginning to the end. Usually they, uh, they see it when it's first starting and they're all the way through distribution to the very end. Um, there's a line producer who I would say is more with the day-to-day -day operations. And they're also going to be looking over the budget, making sure that it's still in budget while you're going through production. Um, and then you have the first assistant director. It's also the second assistant directors and some more off of that. Um, but basically they're taking on responsibility so that the director can focus on creative decisions. They're going to be making the shooting schedule and then uh, on the day when they're on set, they're going to be making sure it stays the schedule. Then there's a production manager or a unit production manager or UPM. Um, basically they're just looking for efficient ways to run shoots on a day-to-day -day basis. On a student set, you probably aren't going to have any of these or all of these roles, um, I think, well, I've never had a student set with a line producer. Um, but I would say, because um, I see a lot of students, whether they're the producer or they're just uh, trying to crew their project, skip over at least the first AD and just say, um, the producer can keep track of things or they'll have the cinematographer keep track of it, which I just don't think is a good idea <laughs> um, at all. I would not recommend it. Um, I think, at DePaul, like, no one might be a assistant director of concentration, but at least having just one other person on set there who is tracking your schedule and making sure that you're uh, still on track is incredibly important. So um, definitely do not skip out on having a first assistant director. Um, is there anything else more clarification on these roles, you think, Martha? No, I'm, I'm glad that you just underlined about the first assistant director because it's sometimes it surprises people that they're so in, involved with pre-production, but they really are. They're the ones in charge of the schedule and making sure everyone knows what the schedule is and when things run long, redoing the schedule. I mean, they're going to be working on that schedule every single day um, and making sure everyone knows what's happening, so the communication and what is shot and what is not shot. I mean, and so, right, so the director can, and, and the DP can focus on what they need to focus on, because you don't want them to focus on, on, oh, what do we need to do now? You want someone else in charge. So that's such an important role, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so to start off, um, 
you should definitely break down your script first. It's kind of the first step. If you just handed your script, um, the whole point of it is to break the script down by different elements. So whether that's props, cast members, um, wardrobe, vehicles, etc. Um, and it's going to help you plan your costs overall, as well as it's going to help you get a number for shooting days, which um, the more shooting days you have, the more money it's going to cost you. So as efficiently as you can get the script broken down, um, it'll help you save money. Even if it's like a student set and you have to do one extra day, like still, you know, finding lunch for 10 people can still be expensive when you have a budget of like $100. So um, it's incredibly important to start with breaking down the script. So how you do that, um, you can break it down by hand, or you can use a program like Movie Magic, uh, or both. Honestly, it's kind of what I like to do because I like to have my script like, printed out and go through it um, and then input it into the program. Um, all scripts are going to be broken down into eighths, which I have examples later so you can visually see this. But basically, if you have a sheet of paper, there's going to be eight eighths, um, and that equals one page. Uh, if a scene is over one page, it would just be like 12 eighths, which, you know, would be like one and a half page, essentially. Um, so uh, when you're going through it, I would have like highlighters, pens, etc., anything of like different color and start color coding it. You'll see on some breakdown sheets that they have colors that are aligned with certain things like cast uh, or red or, you know, props are a certain color. Um, if you can use those same exact colors, but if you're limited, you know, you can underline, you can highlight, you can circle, you can kind of switch it up. Just make sure that you have it written down, whatever your key is that you're going off of. Um, so once you've gone through the entire script, you're going to want to uh, input everything into a breakdown sheet, which I can pull up right now. Okay, well, first, this is what it would look like if it was in ace, right? So you would have um, ace all the way down. Uh, a scene, it might be confusing how you should mark it because they might not line up perfectly. Like this one, it kind of just looks like one eighth, but you know, it's got this header at the beginning. So, kind of a rule of thumb that I would go off of is like, look if there's something similar on the page. Like this one, to me, it's obviously one, two, three, and four and the whole page has to equal eight, like it's got to add up to eight. So I would make this one and two and one and two so that it equals uh, eight eighths. And then, yeah, we'll just jump in. It's not gonna, it, it won't align. It, it is kind of just, you have to kind of figure out like it's an estimation. It's, it's, supposed to be like you know one page equals one minute of screen time so it's a it's an estimate um throughout it so it won't always line up but it is like oh it's almost two eights okay it's two eights right um and you'll see later like why it's in eights because it helps you with your timing um but basically this is kind of an example of like what a screenplay could look like when it's highlighted and stuff um this one I got online, it's not great, but you know, for instance, if you're reading it and you see like gleaming Mercedes, you're gonna wanna mark that because you're gonna know that you need a car on that day. Um, or here's a prop, it says broken neon sign. So you're gonna mark that, um, you know, uh, a soup, a spoon. Um, they also did sound effects. Um, anything like that, you're gonna want to have notice of so that when you go and look at your breakdown sheet, um, you can easily put it in there. So this is what a blank one could look like. Um, you can number them, you can do your page count, which would be the eighths. So if the scene is like two eighths, that's where you put that. Um, project title, scene number, scene name, is it interior, exterior, etc. cetera. Um, definitely give a description because some scenes, if they're in the same location, you're going to get confused because it's just going to say like interior park and you're not going to know which scene it is. Um, so just like a little quick sentence description there. Um, and here's where you would write down uh, all of the cast members that are in that scene, you know, anything else. And this one specifically calls out colors. 
So, you know, ideally, if you were using this, you would highlight props in purple and it would align a lot easier. Um, and then I have one more example of this filled in sheet, um, which is from the scene that you just saw. So um, there's the three cast members that were on there. Um, the prop, the soup and the spoon, um, they also did like they're going to need some special equipment. They have to do slow-mo, so they need a slow-mo camera. Um, you can call out music, anything like that. Um, basically, like these sheets can be dispersed to your different department heads. Um, so, you know, if you want to give this to your production designer so they have an idea of the props, they should also be looking over the script themselves and making sure that they catch everything. But these breakdown sh uh, sheets can be shared between, um, you know, whoever's working on your set so that you guys have a general idea of what is going on. Um, I think that's everything I have to say on that. Yeah, so um, just things I wanted to bring up with scheduling. You're gonna see a lot of conflicts come up with cast mainly or location. You know, there might be a cast member who can only work for half a day or they have to start at a certain time, etc. Um, especially if you're working on no budget and these people aren't being paid, um, they can't take off work. So it can be very complicated to schedule this. Um, I think getting availability when you're casting before you decide, then you can use it as a factor in who you cast, uh, for locations as soon as possible, make sure you have an idea of your shooting dates, which, um, could be difficult, but just try to get it done as soon as possible. And make sure that you're tracking the time it takes to get from one to the other because if you have to do a shoot day uh, at two locations um, you want to make sure that you know how long it's going to take you because packing up a bunch of students and equipment will take longer than you could imagine uh, something else is like props you could only have a prop for one day maybe you have to get it from someone for instance uh, i was on a set where we had to get a car we only had it for two hours so basically we had to schedule all the scenes around that two hour block for the day because we knew we had to get the car scenes out in two hours um and just another note like a comfortable amount of pages would be like three to four a day like that's pretty comfortable i think you see indie productions with small crews especially students trying to get more done but uh if it's pretty simple you might be able to uh, i wouldn't advise this but on the feature we did 10 pages one day it was not fun um i think it was like 14 15 day shoots but the only reason we were even able to do it is because there was like a three page monologue so you know you didn't have to move the camera um we didn't have to change it we just had it on this guy for like three whole pages so things like that obviously um you wouldn't need a whole day just to do those three pages so you have to look at individually like what the actual case is um and just with scheduling like always thinking that kind of like murphy's law um if something could go wrong, it probably will. You need to think about weather, uh, traffic, anything like that, um, because it happens all the time. Uh, moving magic is, if you don't know what it is, um, there's a couple classes at all that will actually teach you what it is. Martha teaches them. Um, but it's basically the common program for generating schedules strip boards, data days, anything like that. You can input stuff and it'll just generate PDFs for you. Um, I marked on the computer labs that DePaul has it in. I know in the third floor, the stew in the Mac lab, I think it's only one row though. It's like the first row or the last row. Um, and then it's in that hallway on the CDM ninth floor. And then it's in CDM 526. I don't know currently what is open with everything going on, but you should be able to get in to at least one of those labs. Um, and yeah, and like I said, it allows you to easily print it out, uh, anything that you could need and, you know, you can upload it to drive or share it to any of your crew members. If you want, I can, I can show what movie magic looks like if you yeah. think there's, yes. there's time. Okay. Yeah. I can do that fast. Okay. Share, share the screen. Look at all this stuff. Okay. And here's basically it's it's exactly what Jennifer was was showing you. It's just a breakdown sheet. 
but it's in movie magic. So these things are already filled out. So it's the scene number, is it exterior or interior, the set, let's see, night, um, how many pages it is, or the eighths of the page. So it's two eighths of a page. Um, a short description of it, the actual script pages that you're using. Um, the script day, which is the chronological order of the screenplay, which if it's just like a day and that's all you're doing, that's that's fine. But it, things like this particular screenplay, there's so many flashbacks and you need to figure out what comes first in the timeline to make sure that you understand what does the character look like? Like, what are the circumstances? What, is the, what are the outfits? Like, is that person like that died like? now they're alive <laughs> things like that um and you see the cast members here the vehicles that are being used so it's all those exact same things on the breakdown sheet um but what's nice about putting it into movie magic is you hit this you have the strip board and all of those sheets are now little strips and you can arrange them. I've already arranged them here. And this is like things that would be shooting in one day, this sh shooting the next day, but I could always move them around. There we go. Now that's in the middle of the night. That shouldn't be there. So I'm going to put that back. And you can also generate a lot of things for say like the props you can go really generate a report, a prop list, hold on, prop list here. I'm going to view that. And here's all the props that I need. And there's a whole, you know, there's many pages of this prop list <laughs> that I might need. And you can see where that would be very useful <laughs> to have. So it just, it's, it's a nice program. Once you put all the information in there, you can generate so many different reports that are so easy to view and are very, very useful. So that is basically that. All right. Back, back to you. Thank you. Oh, is that a cat? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> he's stealing the show. Um, anyway, so back to... Um, strip boards, which Martha just showed you. Um, I also have an example of the feature. Um, but basically the whole point is you're going to have your shooting days in order um, in a whole list so that you can visually look at them. When you're starting off, um, how I approached it was I looked at all the locations. So I took the strip board and put uh, every scene that was in the cafe together, every scene that was in, you know, this person's house together. Um, this might just be me, Jennifer, but I don't have your audio anymore. You can do about exterior, interior, um, and just having this general grouping of them um, will help you out. And then obviously, like when you find out what the type of shots are going to go into it and everything like that, you might find out that you need more time for one or the other. Um, but yeah, generally that's where I would start: is start with locations and then go into it further from that. Um, so the strip board is going to show you every scene and cast member for each day. Each cast member will have a number. Um, it gives you your page count, so that's your the eights, um, shows you where it is, and your estimated time. You can put company moves on your strip board, which company move is basically when um, you're going to a new location, so you have to pack everything up and get to the second location. Um, some people also put like the lunch breaks or dinner breaks or something in there as well. Um, it's color coded by whether it's interior, exterior, or day, night. Um, and then I'm going to pull up my example, but there's also, um, some other things like one liners, which are somewhat similar. Um, they're just more of a, I guess, 
a smaller view of everything because the strip board can be quite massive. Okay. Uh, open. Okay, here it is. Um, so here's a strip board. This was for a feature, but uh, it was a student feature. They do a student feature every summer at DePaul. So if you're interested, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I was the first AD, so that's why I had to do all the schedule and stuff. Um, but yeah, so your first page, it's gonna have all your cast members and they're all gonna have a number assigned to them. By the time you're done shooting, you're probably gonna know them by their numbers because you're just gonna see it all the time. Um, here, I don't like this view. Okay, so if you view it like this, um, we have our shooting day one and it tells us the actual day that it was. Um, our pages and these estimates are not correct. It did not take us 22 hours, but uh, if it was correct, it would have uh, the estimated times, which is probably like eight hours to shoot this. Um, so it will have your sheet number, which is the number, uh, your breakdown sheet, whatever number that was, pages, scene number, um, description name, all of that. Uh, this has one, this is one in 16. So if it's one in 16, that means that you're going to need Benjamin and you're going to need Thomas on the day. Um, so if you were the AD and you were looking at this, you'd want to make sure that you get all of these numbers and that it's on the call sheet for the next day so that everyone who needs to be there is there. Um, something else to note, uh, like I said, it's color coded. So all these exterior days are yellow, the interior days are white, and then interior night is green and exterior night is blue. Um, that's basically it. They're really handy though. And I use this every day when we were shooting because um, it was nice to just be able to check things off. And also when I was preparing the sides for the next day and the call sheet, which um, the sides are when you print out the actual script pages that are gonna be shot. Um, it gave me everything that I really needed to know. Um, so yeah, that is a strip board. Um, and then there's a day out of days. So a day out of days basically is, it can show you who is working what days, um, but it's not just people. You can also have day out of days for locations, props, um, anything that you need. I know since we were a really small set, our production designer really utilized them. Um, so she could see like what props were needed, what wardrobes, et cetera. Um, you'll see on them when I pull it up, you'll see SFW or SWF. Basically it means start, work, finish. Um, which I'll explain when you see it, but basically that's just how you know if they're going to be there or not. Um, this also, this is um, just jumping back real quick because I forgot to show these. There are other views in Movie Magic. If you don't want the whole like full piece strip board, there's also a shooting schedule which it's going to give you um, the props that you need, as well as the actual cast members. It also has the background actors. Um, it has a little less information about like your shooting, but it has more stuff of what you need on the day. So this is something else that you can also uh, pull up. But the day out of days, so this, is for our background actors that we had. Um, so it has at the top, it's got the month and the day of all of your shooting days, day of the week. Um, this is, you know, it was our first day shooting. This was our seventh day shooting, because you might not, we hopefully aren't shooting every day if it's for a very long time. Uh, so coffee shop patrons, it has SWF on one day. That means they started that day and they finished that day. They did not appear anytime else. Um, but somebody like couple one, that means that they started on the third and then they were also in, I can't find it, but another example, police lady, she started work on the first day. Um, and then she finished on this Friday. Um, someone like your main cast, you're going to see a bunch of W's, um, that, signifies that they were there and are working. 
for example, Benjamin, who's our main character. So he started on the second W, means he's work, 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 um, all the way until WF, which means work finish. Um, it'll also give you like, you know, the total days that they're shooting, which could help you if you're trying to figure out how many days you need to pay them for or anything like that. Um, that is basically the day out of days. They're really helpful. Uh, I think I also have one for like uh, props that we used because um, it got complicated with props. So for instance, you could have one for uh, vehicles. We had a lot of cars that we had to have. So we knew that we needed the Honda on this day. Uh, and it, it, the car worked on this day, uh, and then it finished off on this Sunday. Um, so those are really helpful, um, especially for a couple different like department heads. I know like our production designer really liked using them. Um, and back to the presentation. Uh, the call sheet was one of the last things I wanted to mention. Um, I won't go too much into it because I think there's a first AD workshop right after this one tonight. Uh, but usually you're gonna send out a call sheet the night before a shoot. Um, if it's a really small student crew, your first AD is gonna be doing it. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a second AD, then they can definitely help you out with it. Um, there's no you know, right or wrong template. Um, you'll find a lot of them online. I think at DePaul, there's kind of like three or four that circulate on Google Drive. Um, I have some as well, and I put my DePaul email at the end, so if you want a template, I can send you one. It's not a problem. Um, but basically, what you just need to make sure that it has is that it needs to detail what's being shot that next day. It needs to tell you who needs to be where and at what time, and it'd be great if it had contact info, um, because it's what's going to be sent out to everyone, uh, the cast and the crew. So it just shows that you're all on, on the next page for the next day. Um, it can also give crew heads up for what they're shooting. So if you need to prepare something the night before, they have that. So I'm gonna pull up a call sheet that we had from the feature. Um, so here it is, you know, we've got the date, the shoot day, which is the actual days that we were shooting. This was near the end, 16 of 18. Um, it's going to have your, we did a crew pre-call um, because we were on day 16 and we were, we were lagging. So we had 30 minutes before um, an actual crew call. And then you're going to have uh, your base camp, which is where everything's going to be camped out. It might just be your location if that's where you're going to be. Um, you can pull all this stuff from your strip board. This is just the scene heading, a little description. Uh, your scene number, day or night, the cast member numbers, which I was pulling from our strip board, and then uh, your pages and the location. You're going to list every cast member and the character that they play. Since we had so many days, we were doing the start, work, finish. Um, so that would know. And then their call time, obviously. And then a ready time by, which is when you know they arrive they can get settled we didn't have like hair and makeup but if they had hair and makeup um they would need to be ready by that time this is where they reported we had multiple locations so we had to make sure that everyone was going to the right address uh, we had an onset contact in case anyone got lost and then you might see uh, a second page for call sheets and they're usually just going to be a list of everyone we literally only had nine people on this film um so this is everyone but it'll have every individual person's call time, their role. Uh, hopefully it'll have their phone number in case someone gets lost or you need to contact someone. Um, and that's everything mainly that needs to be called out for it. Um, student ones, they don't really need to be that in depth. That's, that's, that's kind of like, um, that's kind of on a high spectrum of ones I've seen from students. But the more detail you can have, the better. Um, make sure your AD doesn't send it out at like 4 a.m. because no one's going to see it. Um, and when you send it out, sometimes in the email, you can say like, make sure you respond that I've seen this and that you know people look at it. But 
they probably aren't going to read it to the end. Just know that, but make sure that they know where they need to be and at what time. So that's the basic uh, part of it. Um, and then that was all that I had in case Martha wanted to say anything. Um, like I said, if you have any questions or want any templates that I had, you can email me. Yeah, I was just going to say that, uh, yeah, giving the advice about sending those out um, that evening and not the next morning, because, yeah, things change so rapidly, and you don't want people showing up to a different location or not know that they're on call or, or any of those things, and making sure that everyone knows that they have to be where they have to be at a certain time, what needs to happen, what needs to be brought, like, so many different moving parts and the first AD is really wrangling and making sure all those little parts are happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Miles, was there any questions or anything? Miles? <laughs> we found dark, obviously. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I think I showed everything. Did you have any other examples or anything? Well, I mean, the examples that you gave, um, I mean, that's that's yeah. basically the, the movie magic thing is just printed out. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's not a hard program to learn. It's just a, a little tricky to make those PDFs, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, but it is all basically inputting information and then just manipulating that information, um, just making reports um, on what you need, right? Day out of days for the, that vehicle one that's incredibly useful. But yeah, especially if such a, so many things depend on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, just scheduling things and knowing all the different factors going in um, <laughs> and being very flexible. Miles told me, or he just sent me a message. Um, <laughs> so I just let him know that we're ready to see if there's any questions. Um, but I did find I had a, a one-liner, which is just another version of something that's on movie magic but um basically i mean it's a really like stripped down version but it tells you where it is and it tells you your seed number your pages um you know if you don't want to carry around the whole strip board um this is also something else that can be useful I guess we'll wait and see if he has any questions. Or honestly, I mean, I guess I can go see if there's any questions on the thing. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm right here, okay. and I actually found oh, some. Cool. Yeah. So I have a question from Hannah Lau. Um, Queen. Yeah, and <laughs> incredible. <laughs> um, so Hannah said, "Are there any pre-production tips for people that haven't had any classes?" And then she also said. How do you start off as a producer, especially during COVID times? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, so for the, if you don't have any pre-production classes and you're not, you know, maybe your concentration doesn't have them, but you still want to do it, I would, as a student, just try to be maybe like a co-producer with someone. Like if you have a friend who's a producer and get on as a producer um, so that you can kind of learn scheduling and stuff um you know if you just have uh, maybe you have a script that your friend has written you can still break it down even if you're not going to be the ap or if you, you know even if you're not going to shoot it um you can still do all of these things so i just think like utilizing the people at the call because i'm sure you'll be able to find someone who um will want you to look at their script and see about it so yeah, there's also, I mean, there's probably like YouTube tutorials on movie magic. While you're at DePaul, utilize the labs. You can still learn how to use it, even if your class isn't specifically about it. Um, you don't have to get a class to go to the lab. So, yeah. Um, and then I'll just break in there. You yeah. break down a script, um, just knowing what you need. 
Um, I mean, that's really, that's what pre-production is. It's just knowing in advance what you're going to need and visualizing, like, sure, all the actors and the props, but also, like, figuring out how long it's going to take, the different locations, um, the cost that it's going to ultimately be. Um, and right, you, and movie magic is great, and you can absolutely get into the labs and work on it, um, and you should but you don't have to do that. You can just get the breakdown sheets and just go through and highlight everything and just make sure that all these scenes are thought of, figured out an easy way to shoot. Obviously you want to group, like if I go to a location, I want to try to shoot everything I need at that location before I leave. So I don't have to go back the next day. You never want to go back. Sometimes you have to, but if you can get everything done in location and then move, um, get everything done from actors and then they can go. Like you just want to be as efficient with your time as possible. Um, and then what was the second question? <laughs> was um, one sec. Was how do you start off as a producer during COVID times? Well, it's a good question. Like becoming a producer, or I guess if you well, already are a producer, we're all figuring that out. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is the fact that you're watching this is a start, I guess. Um, I think a lot of, like on the student side, a lot of things kind of halted when school shut down because mm -hmm. we knew what quite to do. Um, but now that we're back, things like this, um, walking everyone through it, like now is honestly the perfect time to be focusing on pre-production and figuring out for when things are open because you don't you don't need to be meeting with people in person you don't need to be renting anything right now like you just need to be looking at all the material that you have and trying to figure out the game plan like that's just what pre-production is um so yeah i mean that's that's all you really need to do right now is just looking at your pre-work and trying to plan even though it might seem um impossible or so up in the air right now just doing all this pre-work now will save you so much time later so that when you are able to film again, um, you've already done all the work. I would say if you had to do anything right now, just adapting, um, writing something that can be done during quarantine and making sure everyone's safe, um, adapting something that might have already been written to something that you could actually create now. There's not huge opportunities of things that you could create right now but there is some there there is some um i think that the whole zoom you know series and shows and things like that they're they're trying they could crack the code you know it could could be a whole new thing um but it's a uh, yeah it's it's something that if you had to do it you just have to make sure that you could do it safely and simply now but absolutely like this is the time to plan and figure out so when it's safe to to go and shoot what you want to shoot how you want to shoot it you'll be ready for sure and i think that's that's all the questions in the chat um two people loved your cat by the way martha <laughs> 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 yeah, that makes that makes two of you. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks so much for coming. I'll I'll come back on video here. Um, can you? I don't know if you guys can see me. I can't see myself. Yeah, we can see you. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, so thanks guys so much for coming. Um, I yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed. I'm sure they did. Um, we are doing another call all about the work of the assistant director at 7 30 so make sure to you know set a reminder that kind of thing and then hop back in that'll be really great that's going to be hosted by a student named connor lawler and a recent alumni named gia capra and they are awesome and gia is super super knowledgeable and when she was at default was like one of the big go-to ad's so that's like you know definitely tune in for that and stay for that so yeah thanks yeah. guys again for coming great. She's great. She's the director on the feature that I was showing examples from. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good rest of your night, guys. Thank you, Miles. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye.